One day, I got a call from my dad and told me there's this game called Kingdom Hearts and it's a mix between Disney and Final Fantasy. Of course, when I heard that, it instantly piqued my interest. And fun fact, my dad was the one who introduced me to gaming. First game that I played was Gran Turismo on PlayStation 1. I know, classic. And he knows me pretty well because he knows that I love Disney like Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Donald. Well, I watched a lot of old cartoons when I was a kid. Until now, I love Mickey Mouse or Disney. So I said to him that I will try it and he actually bought me the game. Well, it is not a $60 game because back then my PS2 was jailbroken, I live in a third world country and $60 is just too expensive for one game. I remember I was eagerly waiting for school to finish so that I can try Kingdom Hearts 2. After school, I sat down, played the game, and it changed my love for video games. And I want you guys to know that I was introduced to Kingdom Hearts 2 first, then Kingdom Hearts 1. Yes, because of Kingdom Hearts 2, I now love video games. Not only do I like it anymore, that's also the reason I am still playing games till this day. Back then, I used to think gaming is just to have fun, like running around with your friends, playing tag, riding a bicycle, or you know, like football or any other sports. But this game, man, after I played it, I fell in love with how combat works in video games, on how the animation in video games, on how they portray things, storytelling, and voice acting, and of course, the creativity, and many many more in video games. And I find it super weird because I've completed the game over and over and over again on PS2, on PS3, and even in PS4, but I still want to play this game again. I missed it. So I thought to myself, why? Why do I want to keep coming back to Kingdom Hearts 2 and want more of the game, searching for information about the next installment, yeah, you know, Kingdom Hearts 4, and it suddenly came to my mind. This game is very iconic. This game is a masterpiece. My definition of a masterpiece is not that it is a perfect game, and not everyone has to like it. Surely Kingdom Hearts 2 is not a perfect game, but a masterpiece is something that we want more, despite there is something more modern or something more newer. So, like for example, Skyrim. Nothing can top that out, not even their own game Starfield, you know, the modern one. And the more you look at it, a masterpiece of a game is like an art. Just a simple example, the Mona Lisa drawing, created by Leonardo da Vinci. It's one of the best art that has ever been created, and we want more of that, by the artist himself, even if there are so many more amazing art like hentai. <laughs> okay, that, that was pretty good, right? But as you can see, even Mona Lisa is not for everyone either, right? Some say that the drawing is ugly, I mean they are not wrong, it's blurry and old, but there is a unique thing about Mona Lisa. They say the eyes of the drawing will follow you even when you look at it at an angle, and Mona Lisa's smile is happy, but also sad. Look, I don't care about that drawing at all. This is just me giving you an example and the fact that I know that drawing means something and it is very iconic. Same as Kingdom Hearts 2. It is not for everyone but it is an iconic game that has ever been created in the PS2 era and anyone who has played it always says that it is an amazing game. That it has its own charm and many people that has played it want more of it. And as of right now, Kingdom Hearts has gained like a cult following and there are many Kingdom Hearts inspired game. Even in Twitter, there is something like hearts like game. Come on man, it's very very funny but also inspiring. So what makes this game very iconic and a masterpiece? First, the fact that this game is a JRPG combining Final Fantasy and Disney is already fucking huge. Final Fantasy back then, until now, is the definition of JRPG. Anyone who has touched gaming knows what Final Fantasy is. Now, combining the biggest JRPG franchise and the biggest lovable cartoon. Now that is exciting.
And what's even more exciting is the gameplay, because this is where the main fun is. Good concept without good gameplay or combat system is nothing. But man, where should I start? These guys who made Kingdom Hearts 2 combat system are on crack. Comparing this to Kingdom Hearts 1 is such an upgrade to the franchise. This is the only one main reason why I love a good combat system. Now, I have to be honest, in the earlier stages of the game, with only 3 combos, it doesn't feel good, but it still feels better than Kingdom Hearts 1. Honestly, I almost dipped the game because of the 3 hit combo, because it doesn't feel exciting at all. But the creativity of the combat is what keeps me going, so what I mean by that is... This is the first franchise to combine turn-based while well, like selecting the menu option and action RPG. I am like, wow, this is so fucking creative, I love it. You press the confirm button to attack or use the other menus and use the arrow keys to select what action you want to do. Exactly turn-based RPG. And there are so many actions you can do. There's limit for using team attacks with Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Summon for summoning some of the Disney characters you get along the way and they have unique attacks or support for Sora in battle. Well, next up is magic, it is just a simple fire, thunder and so on. But there are some unique magics so I'll get into that later on. And of course, drive forms is where Sora changes form into wielding two keyblades and this is by far the most fun thing to be added in Kingdom Hearts hands down. And I don't know why they don't put it back on again in Kingdom Hearts 3, and at this point, I'm afraid to ask. And of course, party members uh, or party to change party members on the go, and the last but not the least, items. Simple. It's items. <laughs> and the fact that everything in the combat system in this game is thoroughly thought out and so creative is a whole nother level. So now I want to explain things a little bit uh, further or a little bit more detailed. But it is quite hard, so I'll make a list on what to explain, right? So first off, we have attack. As I said in the earlier stages of the game, Sora has only 3 combos, and it doesn't feel good. It feels a bit slow, but it is quite impactful on the last hit, so it's fine. But when you progress through the story, you will gain a lot more abilities to equip, and Sora will feel like a beast. By equipping the abilities, Sora will have more attack varieties, and not just a 3 hit combo. Some of the abilities will modify Sora's attack to have more hits and finishers. Also some of the passive abilities will make Sora have more combos on land and in the air, like mid air combos. So it is not a 3 hit combo anymore, which is a good thing. And of course another abilities is like making jump into high jump, okay? So all the abilities in this game are outstanding and it is made for a purpose and the best part about it is that you don't have to equip all the abilities to make Sora feels like a beast. The modified attacks are not only for land attacks, it is also for mid air attacks and they really nail the mid air combat in this game. It is crazy how good this game's combat system is in the PS2 era. Not even Devil May Cry is this polished because when I see Devil May Cry, I think the animation is a bit clunky at times because uh, they want to make you feel super fast. But in this game, the animation and the combos, they're all very, very smooth. Like all the animations make sense and always in synchronize. And the best part is for some boss fights, some abilities need to be unequipped to make the boss fight easier to take down. So it is not just mindlessly equipping all the abilities in the game. It is crazy how they thought this out giving us a lot of options of what you can do and making us think about it. The combat system is not by all means a perfect combat system. The first problem that I had when playing this game for the first time is when selecting the menus with the arrow keys, you gotta let go of the analog stick. So you are very vulnerable especially in a fast paced action RPG like this. Sometimes you can get hit because the attack is unguardable, so you gotta be fast on selecting the menus not to mention, when selecting the menus, after you confirm it, you have this list of options in the second menu of what you want to pick or choose, but if you want to jump because you see an attack coming at you and you want to evade the attack by jumping, you first need to press the jump button to go back to the first menu and then you can jump. So you need to press it twice making it a delayed input and you will get hit. And you don't have dodge roll in this game. 
well, in the beginning of the game. So it can be quite clunky for some time until you get the dodge roll uh, ability. And dodge roll is only available in the final mix version of this game, so not the original Kingdom Hearts. For some, this is not a problem, especially for the pro KH2 players like the speedrunners or whatever you want to call it. But as a first timer, it can be a problem because I experienced this myself and I died a lot of times because of it. Well, I think that's the only complaint that I have in this game. And the most important part about this game is that it is very, very fun. You have a lot more limits to use comparing to the previous entry. With each party member, you have different limits. I love the limit with Riku, it's fast paced and super cool with double swords just swinging at you, big damage, big AoE and it is always exciting what limit they have to offer for each party member because it is unique and making attacking mobs more fun than ever. Without party members, you can also use limit but you only attack with a fast motion and basically deal a lot of damage, uh, that's basically it. And now we have magic, magic in this game is a bit different and I love it. And what I mean by different is that fire is not a projectile that you shoot like in any other RPG games. But the fire will circle around you making an AoE attack but you are stuck in that one place. And dry forms will change how magic works too. I will get into dry forms later on but now let's go into magic. Magic will help you along the way, like a lot along the way. There is this reflect magic which is the unique one that I said in the beginning of the video where you will guard everyone's incoming attack and reflect it back to them and Magnet to gather everyone. Magnet is a strong magic in this game, and some say it is unbalanced, but I'd say that they are giving us the option to use it because in a game like this, playing in critical mode, which is the highest difficulty or the hardest difficulty, it needs that magic to be a more balanced fight. Next we have Summon. Summon is a whole nother story. By using the Drive Gauge, you can use Summons. It's almost the same as the one in Kingdom Hearts 1, but everyone has their own unique quirks again right here in Kingdom Hearts 2. Chicken Little can gather mobs and stun them so we can mow down the mobs easily. Genie can transform into our form changes which is really funny and speaking of form changes, now we gotta talk about the dry forms in this game. Dry forms in this game is basically Sora changing form so he can dual wield keyblades. There are so many form changes in this game. This is the most powerful system in this game but also the most fun system in this game. Now it is not without drawbacks because when you want to change into something else like dry forms or any forms, you need another party member to, to change. For example, you have Valor form where you will two keyblades and you focus on physical attacks but you cannot use magic. And you need Goofy to change into this form. So if you don't have Goofy in your party members, you cannot change this form. Another example is Wisdom form where you shoot magic projectiles from your keyblade but you will also use only one keyblade, not two. You also need Donald to turn into wisdom form and the list goes on for dry forms. Even though it is powerful, it is not without its penalties. If you use too much forms, you have this hidden meter and if that hidden meter is full, well, we call it anti-form Sora meter, okay? But you get the idea. So when the meter is full, when you use another dry forms, you will change into anti-form Sora. Well, in this form, Sora is becoming a heartless and even though he attacks super fast, but you cannot use heal, magic, cannot guard, and cannot do reaction command, making you very, very vulnerable. This kind of thing is always exciting for a game mechanic. Like, okay, you want to use a powerful attacks? Then use it, but there are gonna be some penalties. And yet we use it to get powerful in the game, still. It's like an anime protagonist using the most powerful attack just to sacrifice himself to a demon or something, I don't know man. It's, it's just an exciting anime stuff that I am nerding all the time. Form changes can also level up and how they gain XP is different. Like Valor form, you need to hit an enemy to gain XP, so every hit you get 1 XP. Wisdom form, you gain XP by using magic. And limit form, you gain XP by using limit form's unique magic abilities. And after leveling it up, you can gain their unique abilities. In fellow form, you can get high jump. In wisdom form, you can get this quick run ability to equip to Sora. Man, I really do love this kind of thing because when you use something, you will gain it. That's why, man, everything in this game is a progress and everything has a purpose. So it's not just mindlessly using this thing, that thing, because when you use that thing, you will gain something. That's the good part about this game. Now, I, I do have to mention that there is one form that you will only get in the final mix version of this game. 
and it is limit form. So this is where Sora changes into the Kingdom Hearts 1 Sora, and this is probably the most fun form in the game by far. Not even the final form they have. No, it's not. This, this one, man. Well, at least for me. You can use Ragnarok from Kingdom Hearts 1, Sonic Blade, and so on, so on, so on. The attack animation is also creative. All the finishers in this form look so fucking cool. They are really making this form exquisite. Making us feel super powerful when using this form. And not to mention, this is the only form you can use without a party member. An awesome, awesome, awesome addition to the game. And speaking of an awesome addition to the game is, of course, the bosses. First thing we notice is that when playing this game again, you get to play against Roxas. Playing this game in the original one, we always think that what would it be if we actually go up against Roxas in that part, in that scenario. And they actually added the boss fight in the final mix version. And boy, I was flipping out and almost cried because how awesome the boss fight is. It is fair and challenging, everything is beautifully telegraphed, every voice line of the boss fight is there so we can know when he is going to attack or use what attack. And this applies to all the bosses in the game, not just Roxas. Reaction Command 2. Man, I forgot to tell you about the Reaction Command in this game. To put it simply, it is a situational command and you press triangle and if you react fast enough to the Reaction Command, you will have this very delicious unique combo or skill just to defeat the enemies. And that is why they call it a Reaction Command. Okay, back to the boss, okay, back to the boss. Reaction commands in all the bosses are a chef kiss to the already amazing boss fights in this game. And unlike Kingdom Hearts 3, well yeah, of course I gotta compare something to Kingdom Hearts 3. Who would have thought? Okay, so most of the bosses in this game, we actually fight against the Disney's villains. It is not all fun, some are annoying like Javar. Man, if I can f skip that fucking hell thing, oh, okay, I fucking will. I fucking hate Javar. Jafar. Whatever. I will not discuss every boss fight in this game, but overall, they are absolutely good. But goddamn, man, the last boss fight in this game is just astonishing. Like, it is so fucking epic that I could cry again. <laughs> Tell me that this is not cool. We know Sora and Riku have their own different ways in the story, being Riku into the darkness and Sora into the light path, and now they, and now they get together to bring down the last boss. It is the cherry on top of everything in this game has to offer. I will never get bored of the ending in this game. It is so satisfying. Sora, Riku, and Kairi finally being together after being separated for so long, and it's just this satisfaction and rewarding feeling that makes us feel empty after the ending. It's really something. When I was a kid, seeing this ending, I'm like, fuck yes, I did it. Ah, finally get rid of the darkness and blah blah blah, all that shit. I think H1 and K2 have these similarities uh, where their original world is big and of course for progressing the story not just the sake of Kingdom Hearts. I love the original world in this game. Hollow Bastion is massive and everyone plays a big big role in this world and in Hollow Bastion we got another world, the Tron world. It is just amazing how everything is linked to the other world. One of the example again is in this new world, we get to go into another world, uh, the Timeless River. It is crazy how good and everything Link is making a huge impact on the story and the immersiveness of the game. While not all worlds uh, are perfect, I don't really like the Lion King where Sora changed into this lion and our abilities are changed. But I think it is a nice touch to the game because, you know, uh, let's bring this world, let's make it creative, change Sora into a fucking lion, and we got another game. It's creative. I fucking love it. Even though I don't enjoy it, I, I really do like it. I mean, love it, not like it. So in a case like this, it's always that feeling where you want to be like, oh man, Sora changed into a lion? Okay, so I want to go into the next world and see what the game has to offer and what I will change into. It's it's amazing, man. Like, oh my god. Ah, man, I like it. I really do like this game, man. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's get back on track. With the Final Mix version, they added more than just Roxas' boss fight. There are a few new cutscenes, new dry forms, which is of course the limit form, puzzle pieces, and of course another world chest, a Mushroom Organization 13 minigame with said mushrooms also found throughout the worlds, a new section to explore in Hollow Bastion, which also has the Data Organization 13 boss battles, and there are plentiful more new bosses besides those. 
I might miss some, but you will need to experience it yourself for the first time because this kind of thing is amazing to experience it for the first time. Boss fights in this game are fair and challenging, and there is a reason why. In Kingdom Hearts 2, there is this thing called revenge value. Well, there is two in Kingdom Hearts 3, but I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more. It is not visible, it is like a hidden meter like uh, anti-Sora form, but it is there for every bosses. So if the revenge value is maxed out after we attack them, the boss will do an uninterruptible attack, but we can guard or dodge it, so it is not RNG. It is just timings and game knowledge when the revenge value will be maxed out. For simple explanation, every source abilities have their own revenge value, for example, finishers have a lot more revenge value when being used, making the revenge value bar for the bosses to max its revenge meter faster. Normal attacks have little to none revenge value, so in a way, you can cheese some boss fight like this. Look, I can go on and on and on for this revenge value because the revenge value for each bosses, but we will just keep it here. Like I said, everything in this game is thoroughly thought out, making the combat challenging, fair, and fun. Even in some games, sometimes you feel like mobs are just there to make you feel good, but when playing this in a higher difficulty, you actually have to think and manage on how you want to tackle the fight. Difficulty in this game ranges from easy, normal, and hard, and critical mode. Critical being the hardest one, and if you choose critical mode, you can play this game at level 1 from start to finish, making the game more and more difficult, but in critical mode, you have early abilities that will help you along the way, without needing to progress first. So again, they actually thought this out and made the game balance, in a way. This is why I love the combat system in this game. It's innovative, masterclass, fun, and exquisite. Till this day, I think we are still chasing those masterclass combat systems. I know y'all gonna say that Final Fantasy Rebirth is similar to Kingdom Hearts 1, and yes, that is true, because it is made by the same team who created Kingdom Hearts 2. But I just wanna see this kind of combat system to be more creative and more innovative in the next installment of Kingdom Hearts. We all can hope and dream, because Kingdom Hearts 4 has been announced and it is in the works, but who knows man, we don't have any more updates to that. So all in all, combat system in this game is a 10 out of 10. I love it. From the creativity of the world, like changing Sora into a lion or many many more, and with all the added abilities from Final Mix, and every ability is half purpose, Oh my god, it is so fun, so I don't know what to explain it anymore man, I'm just nerding out right now. But yeah, you get the, you get the idea that I fucking love this game. Oh my, oh it's lovely, oh yes, he does look very dashing. There is no doubt that the story of Kingdom Hearts is heavily inspired by Star Wars. Because in Kingdom Hearts 2, we suddenly play as Roxas in the prologue without knowing what happened. Then, we play as Sora who is in a cocoon, and then they released a game called Chain of Memories explaining how Sora got into the cocoon. It is similar to Star Wars because we usually watch Star Wars 2 and 4 first then watch episode 3, and the fact that the director of Kingdom Hearts 2 is a fan of Star Wars it kinda explains why. Playing this for the first time is confusing as hell. You basically need to ignore the prologue and just play the rest with your brain turned off so you don't get confused. In Kingdom Hearts 2, pacing can sometimes be all over the place even though it is a linear game and you don't have to visit and you don't have to visit all the world in this game has to offer to finish the game, which is really weird. But then again, it is also amazing because in this game there's a mid part of the game and that story alone the story in the mid part of this game is beautiful it is well crafted it is epic again because you get to see how the progression like uh, there's king mickey because we've been searching for king mickey and we actually got to meet king mickey in the mid part of the game it is really exciting and seeing mickey works his keyblade Damn, I love it man, because I, I really do love Disney, I love Mickey Mouse, I love Goofy, and I love Donald. And this kind of thing makes me excited to play this game even, even more. Well, Kingdom Hearts storyline is not a perfect storyline, it's not something that you need to focus on honestly, because they really focus more on the combat. The story is a bit meh in my opinion, but I think it is still better than Kingdom Hearts 3. Of course man, I gotta compare it again. So yeah, Kingdom Hearts 2 story... It's meh in my opinion, but still pretty good. Move it! 
visuals and performance. Visually, this is a pretty acceptable in the PS2 era, but my god, when there is this static phase, it is a goddamn horrible. I don't know why I didn't realize this when I played this back in the day, but in this day and age, man, I cannot stand it. That's why I really appreciate the visual upgrade in Kingdom Hearts 3, more expressions and no more static faces in any of the cutscenes. But now, the static face in Kingdom Hearts 2 is an iconic thing in Kingdom Hearts, and visually, everything in this game is good to see. And what I mean by that is that you can see every boss movement even if the boss has these impactful and flashy moves or any mobs and, and it is not blinding like in some other games, aka Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. To put it simply, it has some good animation to visual kind of thing, performance is not that bad, it's actually good. It's an old game and when playing this in the PS2, of course we are playing this in 30 FPS and it's not bad. I can still actually play it and beat it in level 1. I actually tried this game in the emulator not too long ago and I'm playing this in 30 FPS and I'm playing it just fine. But in 60 FPS is a whole nother level and I love it. Thank you so much Papa Nomura for creating a remastered HD version of this game. Thank you so much. Arigato, arigato, Papa Nomura. Next, we have sound design. Where should I start? Because this game's music. It's outstanding. Just hear this when you are in the title screen. Dearly Beloved is becoming the icon of Kingdom Hearts music. How can you not love this music? It's relaxing, it's iconic, it's cozy, and it is beautiful. Even for someone who doesn't love games and when they hear this, they all say that this is an amazing and beautiful music. Even Lazy Afternoon in Twilight Town, everyone loves this. If you are asking me how the fuck do I know, you don't even have friends. <laughs> buddy, buddy, buggy. Okay, well, when I played this way back in middle school, my cousins, some of whom are girls, sat down with me just to see me play this game because this is a Disney game and they all love the music in this game. Which is crazy because my cousins don't really play games. Well, they don't really play action JRPG or things like that. They only play some relaxing game like Crash Bandicoot Racing or Barbie. And the fact that they like the music in this game in an action JRPG like this, it's something. And sound effects are pretty goddamn awesome too. It is not over the top but when they are impactful or big attacks, the sound goes kaboom man, kaboom. And the voice line of the bosses, like I said in the previous section of this uh, review, you can hear everything. And voice line like this is really important because you know what they will do. So you can do no damage run, block every attack, dodge every attack. It is just an important aspect of the game. And they got it right. So Kingdom 2's sound design is a top tier in my opinion. I think it's like a 9 out of 10 for me. So we have come to a conclusion or this is like my overall thoughts. This game despite there being flaws, the pacing of the story can be all over the place sometimes. But this is a super fun game. Combat is satisfying and rewarding. You want more of the combat and the creativity of this game. Man, the creativity of this game is top tier. Even when we fight that thousand heartless, man, fighting alongside Final Fantasy and Disney characters, it is just a memorable and iconic experience to our childhood. For a game, making an impact in our childhood is just masterclass. This is why I said that Kingdom Hearts 2 is a well-deserved masterpiece of a game. It's iconic, it's memorable, but not everyone has to love it. It's not for everyone, but it is an iconic for sure. It is a good game. And the most important thing is that we all had fun playing this game way back and still remember it till this day.
So thank you guys so much for watching this video, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys again in the next one, bye guys.